A huge part of the Bronx's history starts at the Kensico Dam, which is a massive turn-of-the-century build, which is roughly 300 feet high and 1,800 feet wide. The Kensico Dam tames the Bronx River, keeping it down to a mere stream as it crosses 12 municipal towns before reaching the Bronx. The Bronx River was once a twisty bowl of windy streams, lakes, and wetlands. The later caused by the many colony of beaver that attracted the early Dutch settlers of the 1600s. Mohegan, Lenape, and other natives made good use of the river as it had every resource a river is supposed to have, such as good fishing, drinking water, hunting, bathing, and good vegetation. Dams created by beaver traps pockets of water over vast areas of land, contributing to a healthy ecosystem. The demise of the Bronx River first started with the harvesting of beaver used for their pelts of fur in the mid 1600s. European settlers used it as open sewers catering to the houses built along its banks in the 1700s. The industrial revolution that brought over a dozen mills to the river in the late 1800s destroyed it with toxic waste while the construction of the Bronx River Parkway and the decimation of the Bronx in the 1900s made it a useless dump for cars and tires that made a thriving ecosystem nearly impossible. Efforts from organizations such as the Bronx River Alliance has taken steps to stop 300 plus years of the river's misuse. It is the only freshwater river in New York City, making it a conservatory that aids plant and animal life. The river was a hazard to the public until the Bronx River Alliance revitalized it at the turn of the millennium. I too has explored the river and found the area between the Botanical Gardens and the Bronx Zoo to be Jurassic Parkish. The immense fish was plentiful, and countless bird species all followed a flight pattern that did not go above the tree line. It's like they purposely avoided the city landscape. Well, I'm on the Bronx River. Uh, it's almost a shame that at a time that parallels the highway of the Bronx River Parkway. Um, yeah, man, magnificent day. Uh, it's a bit cloudy, which is perfect, even though there is a lot of uh, shade out here. Let me show you the situation out here. Alright. Situation. Uh, the water's very shallow, but I managed to shave a lot of pounds off. Uh, that's why you gotta do scouting ahead of time. Here goes uh, noise pollution from the highway. Like I said, it's almost a shame that the highway's here because, in actuality, this is a beautiful river. And as you can see, the water is actually clear and clean and fresh. <laughs> yeah. But it is what it is, man. Get back to y'all. Nice little waterway out here by uh, Bronx Zoo. Uh, twin dams. I'm bracing myself because this thing want to suck me in. But uh, I'm by myself. I can't be too dangerous. Can't take too many risks. So I just check it out by uh, from here. Maybe 20 feet away. Being the urban explorer that I am, I took it to the woods to find signs of factory ruins, mills, or nostalgic relics that may still be tucked and hidden in plain sight. If you look real close, you can put it all together. This monument marks the southern terminus of the original Bronx River. What that monument tells all of us is that the Bronx River Parkway that we see today is not the original one, only a modernized one. This, according to that monument, is the original Bronx River Parkway.
Coming across the monument clue opened my eyes to what's behind me. This is the Gun Hill area, and behind me is what might have been the original Bronx River Parkway. It seems like generation after generation for hundreds of years has enjoyed the Bronx River. And it also seems like it's a long journey ahead to fully restore the river to its grace. Much respect to the volunteers who get together to care for the river. Today, Many factories along the river are closed and no longer in existence, giving the river an advantage. So we're gonna end this little segment here, right by the Bronx Zoo Falls. Thank you for watching the video. Until next time, peace.